I'm Jude Arbieloway, host of Imagine Community, and today we're here with Councilman Green of City of Philadelphia. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about your past, since okay. it is an unconventional career path. Kind of an interesting round. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. We've mm -hmm. been super supportive of you from the mm -hmm. very beginning. Thank you very much. Of course. And then your, your current role mm -hmm. uh, as a council person for City okay. of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and then the future. Future of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. your future, whatever you'd like to talk about. Okay, sounds good. All right. So your past, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing, your education, your career choices? So born in the city of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. not far from Truman Belfield, um, lived there mm -hmm. at a young age, and then my mother uh -huh. um, worked for the school district, um, and she was a teacher on a high school. I uh, spent 30 years, about 33 years on the high school. Amazing. My dad worked at the Department of Labor, and uh -huh. when they created the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, uh -huh. he transferred from the Department of Labor uh -huh. to EEOC. Oh, uh, wow. So that was a very interesting environment, um, but oh. we were very engaged in a lot of different organizations, very civically engaged, sure. um, fraternity organizations, uh -huh. social groups, also very active in our church. Um, mm. My pastor emeritus is Reverend Dr. Gus Roman, who mm. was one of the main um, architects with Reverend Dr. Leon Sullivan of OIC, or Opportunities Industrial um, Corporation, which did a lot of work here in the city of Philadelphia and across the nation, mm -hmm. across the world. So the first African-American-owned mm -hmm. um, supermarket and actually shopping center is right here in Philadelphia, Progress Plaza. Oh. And Rev, you know, um, Reverend Roman worked uh -huh. very closely with uh, Reverend Sullivan. And so I grew up in Canaan Baptist Church, and I'm still a member of Canaan as we speak. Oh, that is amazing. But definitely surrounded by a lot of role models, a lot of people yes. active, uh, civically minded, mm -hmm. and uh, dare say perhaps be the origins of social justice too. Absolutely. I'm just remembering over the years, Reverend, um, <laughs> Reverend Roman would have a lot of different speakers from mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson, oh, wow. other prominent people that would come to Canaan on a Sunday oh. um, morning to just, you know, in addition to uh -huh. preaching the gospel, but also just talk about social justice and civil, civic action. So the very mm. engaged, uh, socially charged environment. Uh -huh. uh, my parents were involved in a lot of different activities like that. Oh, very lucky to be growing up in that sort of an mm -hmm. environment. And then uh, you went on for your education. Where did you go to school? So I went to University of Virginia for undergrad. Oh, and right. I was in a program called Inroads. And Inroads <laughs> was uh -huh. a corporate training program to take talented minority youth and prepare them for corporate industry. Mm. And so I started with Meridian Bank mm -hmm. um, right out of high school. Mm. And so my first summer as an intern, I was a teller. Oh, wow. And then each summer through mm -hmm. my four years at the University of Virginia, I interned at Meridian Bank. So my first summer I was a teller, mm -hmm. second summer I was a um, customer service agent, oh, that's third crazy. summer I did the same thing, and then the fourth summer I was working in our kind of our credit training um, program. Huh. And then they gave me a job opportunity when I graduated from college. That's amazing, mm -hmm. and quite a program too. But you started your career in finance. What was that big turn for you to eventually uh, go to from finance to on the ground organizing and then of course eventually run for city council person well i was at meridian bank as mm -hmm. a small business lender uh -huh. and i was actually in north philadelphia broad in glenwood uh -huh. and it really gave me a chance to meet a lot of people in the community and uh -huh. really provide access to credit sure. to people that had a small business who were trying to grow their small business right. and also help people to better run their businesses. And so mm. when they started, and like a lot of people know about credit scoring or your sure. credit score, see so back then they really didn't have that, but they uh -huh. started to implement those type of things. Mm. And I decided I wanted to get out of banking because I really didn't have the ability to help people like I did when I first started. Right. And then from there, I decided to go to law school. Uh -huh. Initially, I was thinking I would probably go to New York, maybe NYU. Right, right. And I met a young lady, and oh. next thing I know, I was dating, and then uh -huh. I got married, so I ended up going to Temple Law School. Oh, that's and great. so when I was at Temple Law School, I was thinking more finance mm -hmm. activities. And so a good friend of the family mm -hmm. was saying, listen, banking and law in Philadelphia really wasn't mixing because you got a lot right. of companies that were acquiring uh, some of the traditional banks like a Meridian uh -huh. from outside of the city. Right. And so I got more involved in securities work. Uh -huh. so I did securities work for a period of time, mm -hmm. both in Delaware, and then I had a chance to come back to Philadelphia oh, that's great. To, be, to be in the district attorney's office. Right, right. And when I was in the DA's office, that's when I really started getting involved in a lot of what I would say my 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. activities. Mm -hmm. Getting involved in the civic organizations, mm -hmm. economic development act acti activities. Mm -hmm. And so I had a chance to go from the DA's office mm -hmm. to the law department. 
Oh, and that's when great. I was in law reform, I had a chance to represent the Office of Housing and Community Development, uh -huh. uh, the Commerce Department, right. uh, Philadelphia Housing Development Corporation. Uh -huh. I got to know a lot of the economic development agencies uh -huh. in the city of Philadelphia. Also, I got involved in the Urban League of Philadelphia. They had what was called the Urban League Leadership Institute. Oh, right. And so it gave me a chance to get involved in a more civic and social conscious way mm -hmm. on some of the issues here in the city of Philadelphia. Oh, that is amazing. So it, it sounds like you started from one career-minded goal mm -hmm. and then just kept on taking opportunities that led you to then eventually run right. for a city council person. Right, so the Urban League was interesting because mm -hmm. it was modeled after a program called Leadership Inc. And mm -hmm. historically, Leadership Inc. did not have a lot of people of color go right. to that program. Yes. So the Urban League of Philadelphia felt there was a need to put together a training program mm -hmm. to really expose um, young professionals and uh, emerging professionals to mm -hmm. some of the people who are doing a lot of great things in a civic perspective in mm -hmm. the political arena and get involved in various boards. So after a nine month program, mm -hmm. then I got involved in the Urban League Philadelphia board. Oh, and so I was on that great. board, I got to know people like sure. Oprah Scrawley, who was the founder of the American Chamber of Commerce, right. um, George Burrell, who at uh -huh. that time had just been a city council person. Right. So I started to get to know people throughout the city of Philadelphia, and then I got more engaged in more activities, which then led me to get involved in the Center for Progressive Leadership, where right. we met. Yeah, and that, that brings us up to 2010. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And then, uh, but you still continue to mentor mm -hmm. and take on groups through the right. Center for Progressive Leadership as well as teach. Mm -hmm. uh, you are definitely always available to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the things that I always admired about you. Oh, Despite you. how busy you were, you <laughs> always you. prioritized right. our, our network. Well, I think I've had I've been blessed mm -hmm. when I talk with some of the people that helped mentor me through when I was a young person getting involved in Urban League in Philadelphia or when mm -hmm. I was in, in law school. The number of people I reached out to that provided mm -hmm. opportunity just to lend an ear, give us advice and guidance. Sure. And so as I've been very fortunate to be mm -hmm. successful in a lot of ways, I feel it's my responsibility to also try to help mm -hmm. provide opportunities other people to either give a sounding board, get some suggestions, some ideas, sure. not to say that, well, you should do it because I said it, right, but because right. here's some information I've learned from different perspectives, uh -huh. I'll give it to you, take it, use it Packaging for however you want to pack it, right. it whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. use it how you want to, yeah. but that way you can make your own informed decision sure. because I've been able to help you get some additional information. And that's why I got so involved in the Center for Progressive Leadership because mm. it gave me an opportunity mm -hmm. to not only enhance my own skills when I went through the program, right. but also be a faculty coach and work with other people because I feel that as you are coaching someone, mm -hmm. not only are you providing them with information, sure. but you're also learning from them. And so I often try to get uh -huh. uh, a lot of different ideas and suggestions. So I enjoy the marketplace of ideas because you right. never know where, when and where you can get a great idea. Absolutely. And so then what was the idea for you to run for city council? Well, I ran in 2007, right. and at that time I was a little bit younger, and mm -hmm. I thought I kind of, because I worked in city Best council. That's hair. Right, 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 <laughs> more hair. But I yes. worked in city council um, uh -huh. for Council Marion Tasco, and yes, I got to Tasco. work with her uh -huh. because when I was in the law department representing those different organizations, mm -hmm. like the Office of Housing and Community Development, mm -hmm. she started to address the issue of freight on lending. Oh, and because yes. people knew I had a banking background from oh, Meridian Bank, they said, you know, Derek, can you work with Council Matasco mm -hmm. on this predatory lending issue? So working with her um, over about nine months, we drafted and, and passed mm. one of the nation's first anti Pray to lending bills in the country. That's and huge. And making a model for a lot of different cities. Sure, sure. And because before the Consumer Financial Bureau wasn't even this around. This before. Yeah, and, yeah. And people really didn't even know about pray to lending. I mean, right. Councilman Tasco was very active in the National League of Cities. Mm -hmm. And the first year she talked about it, you know, mm -hmm. she was talking in a workshop mm -hmm. and hardly anyone attended. The following year, after the legislation got passed and sure. articles in the Wall Street Journal and uh -huh. the New York Times, Washington Post, and our in our local Philadelphia papers, that next year, the same workshop she gave was standing room only because wow. it became an issue not just in a Philadelphia uh -huh. or Cleveland, but in rural parts of the country, suburban right. areas, because people were getting swept up in this whole issue of predatory lending. Mm -hmm. And that was right before the financial crisis we had in 2008. Yes, I do remember it well. I was a little bit overseas, and people are saying, what's going on in America? Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly how yeah. she got involved in the issue because she had people she knew for a long time at her church, Brighto Baptist, mm -hmm. who were coming up to her and saying, Councilman Tasco, Marion, I mm -hmm. got into a loan. Right. I don't know how I got into, I sure. signed the paperwork, and now they're saying I owe more money. money. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, then I had payments. before, 
work, yeah. I know that my house was almost paid off or right. close to paid off. Now I owe much more than my original loan, but I don't know where the money went. Right. There were all these fees. And so that's how I got involved with Council Tasco. Uh -huh. And then her legislative aide uh -huh. decided to run for judge. And uh -huh. then she asked me to come on board. And that's why I worked for her for a number of years. Uh -huh. Ran in 2007, knew a lot of people, but I yeah. had never run for office. And oh, although yeah. I had you know, helped in organizations like a Center for Progressive Leadership. Uh -huh. I've been a campaign manager or counsel to other candidates. Right. But it's a lot different than you running for your, yourself. And yeah. I learned a lot in 07. Uh -huh. uh, I came in 10th place out of, I think, about 25 candidates. That's great. So uh, it was a good learning experience. Uh -huh. uh, and I took that experience and I continued to work for Council Tasco. Uh -huh. And then she decided uh, a few years ago that she was not going to run for re-election. Uh -huh. And so I was thinking, what's going to be my next step? Do I go in private practice? Do right. I work for another elected official? Right. So as I was trying to make those decisions, uh -huh. um, our current mayor, Jim Kenney, who had been interested in running for mayor for some time, yes. he had, I'll never forget, so this early uh, 2015, uh -huh. we were supposed to have a major snowstorm here in Philadelphia. Mm. The snowstorm never materialized, right. but he still had a press conference stating that two days from now, he was going to resign from city council right. and run for mayor. I don't remember and that. so then I started thinking, well, maybe I should try it again. Uh -huh. And so I reached out to a lot of people, not just people that I knew in the northwest part of the city, uh -huh. but all over the city, and got some good feedback, uh -huh. and thought about it and made the decision, you know what, let's try it again. Let's do it again. Right. Let's make history again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but right. Was, and then you had a very successful run this time around? Yes. So, second time's a charm? Yes, second time's a charm. Uh, my wife supported me the first time and the second time. Mm. It worked out very well. And I, had a, now I, I would say I was very blessed. I had a lot of great friends, supporters, mm. and I learned a lot from that first run. And I think if I had not had that first run in 2007, right. I would not have been as prepared um, for the run I made in 2015, which made me more successful. Sure. So it really feels like one plus one does equal three in your career, that everything mm -hmm. just kept on building from one experience to right. the other. So what's your typical day like as a city mm -hmm. council person? Well, my day is very engaged. So I get up at a very early time of the day, uh -huh. uh, typically about 4.45 to Oof. go to the gym. Uh -huh. uh, then after I go to the gym, when I come home, um, I then start making my son's breakfast. Oh. I eat breakfast. My uh -huh. wife normally leaves to go to work at a quarter of seven. Wow. I uh, feed the dog. Uh -huh. I then take a shower. Uh -huh. And then you know, get my son dressed. And then mm. my son's bus comes around a quarter of eight. Uh -huh. uh, my son is 16. Uh, he's autistic. So right. interesting. So we're dealing with the autism mm -hmm. and teenager dynamic, Ooh. which is interesting because, sure. you know, although he's on the autism spectrum, spectrum yeah. he's still a teenager like anyone else, I just with that little that. autism he is, mixed in. So, yeah. all the same dynamics that a typical teen has, uh, he does just within the, in the lens of autism. Sure. And so, after the bus comes to pick him up, uh -huh. then normally I have a chance to check my email, read the paper, mm. then I'm coming downtown to City Hall, right. and literally I'm in meetings from 9, 9.30 to about 5 o'clock, mm. and then after 5, I have one or two events after work, uh -huh. uh, and then when I leave those events, mm -hmm. I come home, mm. uh, eat dinner, mm -hmm. uh, touch base with my wife, my right. son, say how they're doing, check sure. homework, and then from there, I'm answering emails uh, on my computer to 11, sometimes 11.30. Oh my gosh. And do it again the next day. So your five, your original 5 to 9 activities, PM, yes. have now extended from 5 a.m. <laughs> yes. to beyond yes. 5 p.m. Yes. So it keeps me that is very amazing. busy during the week. And Fridays are not as bad because I tend not to have as many events Friday evenings. Oh, that's good. Saturdays, you know, we have some events often. Uh -huh. I will bring my son or my wife with me to events. Mm. You know, try to make it a family I've seen the thing. Facebook pictures. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I try to make it a family event. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, trying to go out to eat, have dinner, and try to have fun activities. Right. Um, and then Sunday, you know, church, and then mm. I have events with my son. My son plays soccer oh. on Sunday afternoon. So try to make it a very uh, family oriented uh, weekend, but it can be a very long weeks. Yeah, so, it sounds yeah. like it. It sounds like it. So what are some of the things that you're currently working on now that you could mm -hmm. use some additional assistance and maybe get a night off? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one of, the, one of the main reasons why I ran for city council is really to address the issue of poverty here mm -hmm. in the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. you know, as many people know, we are the largest city in the nation with the highest level of poverty. Sure, 25% so, Asian Americans. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so 
one of the things that I've been trying to do is, is look at how we address poverty from different perspectives. Mm. You know, we do a lot of work in the city mm -hmm. from a workforce perspective to either increase wages right. or to get more people Putting employed. Wages, I've been also yeah. supporting that, mm. but also looking at how do we do things from an entrepreneurship perspective, of which course. takes me back to my banking background, mm -hmm. where, where I've worked with small business owners in North Philadelphia. And mm -hmm. so I'm doing different initiatives, work with our Commerce Department mm -hmm. to provide more access credit for small business owners. Mm -hmm. We have an initiative called the Capital Consortium, right. which is kind of like a lending tree type of program for small business owners, mm -hmm. where you would submit a one-page application mm -hmm. through the Commerce Department. Mm -hmm. The Commerce Department receives that information mm -hmm. and sends it to our network or our consortium mm -hmm. of 25 to 30 different lending entities from a West Philadelphia Financial Service Institution to mm -hmm. um, banks in the region that you may know. Sure. They review that um, one-page application, and then they say, you know, we're interested in providing mm -hmm. this organization with money. Mm -hmm. And so then the Commerce Department receives that information, sends it back to the applicant. Mm -hmm. So just like Lending Tree, you submit your information, and then you get back two to three uh, Offers, entities that yeah. may be interested. And then you select which one, and then you work with them going forward. So well, that's we're great. trying to grow that initiative. Yeah, I've talked to Josie O about it. Yes, yeah. yes. And so we're trying to grow mm -hmm. that initiative, get some additional resources for that initiative, mm -hmm. and also hopefully we can provide marketing mm -hmm. for that initiative so people will become very familiar with it. Yeah. Because as a small business owner, yeah. you, know, you are probably the one that's the most proficient mm -hmm. in your business in providing that good or service. Right. And you're often the HR person, yes. the collection manager, oh, yeah. the environmental technician. Oh, yeah. Uh, all those things, all, wear all those different hats. Uh -huh. So you may not have time to come to City Hall or no. another building for a meeting. Right. So we're trying to provide this information and ability to access credit to you via the internet and online through the city website. Oh, that's great. I'm so supportive of that program. And I believe we sent something out to our newsletter. Oh, we good. have about 10,000 people on our Very email good. list. Uh, but our email lists are beyond Philadelphia, mm -hmm. too. But just letting people right. know this is what's going right. on in Philadelphia. Absolutely. So the future of Philadelphia, what do you think? Well, you know, Philadelphia is at a very mm -hmm. interesting perspective. Right. It's almost... Uh, like a tale of two cities and mm. a very, you know, Charles. Downtown city, Philadelphia right. and the rest of Philadelphia. Right. You have the yeah. the core or center city, mm -hmm. what's considered center city, is expanding mm -hmm. dramatically both on the north sure. and on the south and also a little bit to the west. Mm -hmm. We look what's happening in the University City area. Oh, yeah, yeah. But what are we doing to help those neighbors throughout the city of Philadelphia mm -hmm. um, that may not be experiencing that same level of growth and prosperity? Sure. And so that's one of my concerns that mm -hmm. you know, we've drawn and attracted a number of new people to the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. you know, our population, um, for the first time in a long time, is actually growing as opposed to shrinking. Right, the older is, population versus right. the immigrants that are coming into the Immigrants, the, millennials, and the millennials, yes. people that maybe work in the city but live outside the city. Right. We're now moving into the city. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing to help grow the commercial corridors mm -hmm. throughout the city of Philadelphia excuse, excuse that are parts in, in northeast, lower northeast, oh, yeah. northwest, west Philadelphia, south, southwest Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I see that capital consortium can mm -hmm. really be helpful because it can help those small business owners on those commercial corridors mm -hmm. like a Washington Lane or right. Washington Avenue right. or Frankfurt Avenue or Care Street Avenue oh, yeah. um, or um, other parts of the city right. to really help them Extending grow. past Baltimore. Exactly. Baltimore yeah. Avenue, yeah. And, um, King Sessing. How do we help those businesses to grow? Mm -hmm. and I think one way we can do that is through this capital consortium mm -hmm. where we can provide them with access to credit in a way they may not be able to get in the past. That's great. So I'm going to ask you to take your business card uh -huh. and okay. blow that vision yeah. of Philadelphia. So nothing on this. Yeah, we're going to do like a little Johnny GI Carson. magic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Johnny. And just pop it right <laughs> in. Or just pop it right okay. in here. Thank, Thank you. you. And you can get in touch with Councilman Derek Green at Derek.Green at Phila.gov. Uh, and you can also find him on Facebook at Councilman Green, Derek Green. I apologize for that. As well as Twitter and Instagram at Councilman Derek. That's correct. D-E-R-E-K. D-E-R-E-K. Thank, Thank you so much for all of the time that you spent no with problem. us today. It was a pleasure. And it was a pleasure to see you too. And keep on keeping on. Thank you very much. Take care.